Hey, what's up, Vox and Hops heads? I'm Matt, the vocals of Cryptopsy, and you're listening to my podcast, Vox and Hops, where I sit down with fellow metal musicians to talk about their lives, music, and craft beer. I hope you guys had a great weekend. I was super busy and have been super busy, but I did take some time to sit back and relax and to enjoy the weekend with my family. It is always very important to appreciate these small moments where things are calm Try to bask in the positivity, people. There's just way too much negative stuff circulating around out there in the world. And this tornado of negativity is getting stronger and stronger. And it takes uh, people like us to uh, remain positive, to try to spread some positivity, to uh, combat that. And I uh, strongly advocate that all of you should join my positive tornado. We could do it. We will beat this negative storm and we will come out of it stronger, happier, better people. I challenge you all to do that. Today's Vox and Hops episode is presented by Heavy Montreal. Heavy Montreal is Montreal's premier metal promoter. They host one of North America's best metal festivals. I have played every festival out there just about. I have played Wacken. I have played Hellfest. I've played Brutal Assault. I've played Summer Breeze. I have played Partizan. I've even played Loud Park in Japan. And I got to tell you that Heavy Montreal is right up there with the best of them. I'm extremely, extremely proud to be from Montreal and to have such a high-quality festival in my hometown. Massive shout-out to Heavy Montreal for presenting this episode. I'm all about it. On today's episode, I'm with Paolo Jr. of Sepultura. Here it is. This is Vox and Hops, episode number 173. I warn you, what you are about to hear is very disturbing indeed. Hey, what's up, everyone? Today I'm with Paolo of Sepultura. It is so, so good to be with you. Um, I've been a fan for as long as I've been listening to metal, and it is uh, very, very cool to sit down and have a chat with you, share a drink with you. I'm very excited. So let's start this off super simple. Uh, How are you? How are you doing in the madness of the world that is now 2020? Uh, It's a pleasure to be here with you, man. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, trying to be as best as we can. You know, we, Brazil, it's been locked down, kind, for the past 120 days. We had to cancel the North America tour two days before uh, getting to the plane. And we've been at home. So from Sao Paulo, I came to my hometown, Belo Horizonte, to stay with my mom and my sister, because, you know, just uh, at least I'm here with them. and. Uh, I can watch them, take care of them. And, uh, you know, I've been sitting at home, playing, reading, watching documentaries, and trying to drink once a week. Because <laughs> it's very dangerous, my friend. If you, keep, if, you, if, you, if you lose the control, you're in trouble. So trying to, to, to work on a, only on the, on the weekends. That is a very, very wise decision because you are right. Yeah. It's a slippery slope and any day can be the weekend if you have <laughs> nothing to wake up for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, at the beginning, everything was, you know, because I got very lazy. So everything was all the, the, the clock was all, all messed. So I was going to bed like eight o'clock in the morning, just going through the whole night watching documentaries, movies. <laughs> I was like, nothing to do. I was like, I don't know, drinking, uh, like, drinking coffee. I was like, uh, and uh, just being a bomb at home. So, and then I started to focus and start, we, we start to do the simple, simple quarter every Wednesday. And uh, then we start to, I start to focus and had, had a better calendar, you know, follow a better, better calendar. Well, there's, no, there's nothing worse than, than a tour being canceled, but it, it gets so much more worse when it gets canceled two days before and it's your album release uh, and the album was so well received and you know north america loves you guys T- talk me through those days going up to that uh, had you were you aware of what was going on with covid were you was it like something that was happening in your camp where you guys were talking about a potential cancellation uh we, well, we heard the, all the rumors uh, we were we were in the united states in, uh, in january for the nam and i was in europe as well because i have a bar in amsterdam so I had I flew to from Sao Paulo to Amsterdam, Amsterdam, Los Angeles, Los Angeles back to Amsterdam and stayed until beginning of February. But at the the point was not still as bad. So I got back to Brazil and all the news started hitting up 
and uh, and uh, and then all the the all the borders start to close down. But at the same time, we like in the studio preparing to 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 get into the tour, you know. And uh, we have like two weeks of rehearsal every day, you know, doing something that we never done before, which was. We had uh, the, the quadra record, it has 12 songs. And uh, we, we were ready to play seven out of the 12 songs. Wow, good for you guys. So yeah. it's something that we never done before. Yeah, so it's something, is, that I, uh, something that I is, strive to do with Cryptopsy is to put yeah. new songs into the set list, put yeah. that new album in forward on stage. So that's very cool that you guys are doing that. But it takes a lot of work to get it ready for- Yeah, it's a lot of work. It's a very, it's a, it's a very unique record. It's a very hard, album to play it's not easy and uh so everybody was very excited about it and we we brought some old obscure songs as well to the set list and uh in two days before we had to we we were re ready to 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 jump in the into the plane we had to cancel everything and postpone for to march uh have a uh, second half of march uh, next year so we'll see We'll see how it goes. At least it's been, everything starts start to be rescheduled, but we don't know at this point what's going to happen, but the calendar is, it's already there, so. Absolutely, now, 2021 is already booked for all bands. It's, uh, everything's been rescheduled. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a, it's going to be a tsunami of bands, because everybody's yeah. like, it's going to, ah! <laughs> the fans, the, the people that enjoy the music, they're going to be suffering to pick it up, or who they're going to see next year, because everybody will be hungry to go back on the tour. Not only right. the bands, the, the crew, but the crowd itself, you know. It's going right. to be, so, uh, it's, it's it's be a good, crazy, you know, moment good cr crazy uh, celebration of life i believe yeah yes yes save your money people so you can go see as many shows as possible because there's yeah gonna be just a lot expend of your money and we you can you can <laughs> you, you always in a good health it can work and it can make money we're gonna be coming back many many times as much as we can you know usually this cycle takes about uh, three years but i think for this record i think it's gonna it's gonna be a little longer I give hope it, so as well. Give it, give it some time <laughs> to breathe. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Vox and Hops is all about hanging out uh, with my metal friends, talking about their lives, music, and craft beer. So, what what do you have on your side there, Paolo? I have well today. I have just to show you guys the Sepultura Ale. Fucking right. right. Yes. It's it's made in Brazil, São Paulo, outskirts right. of São Paulo. It's a uh, it's a uh, it's a ale, but from the Bavaria school. So it's basically, ha it has a kind of the touch, the IPA, but uh, all the ingredients comes from the Bavaria. The only thing is Brazilian is the, the water that they treat on the factory. So he, he developed this, uh, this recipe for us, very only for, to celebrate the, the 30th anniversary. We have uh, a vice beer as well with them, which uh, represented the 25th uh, <clears throat> anniversary of the band, but it's the same as they have uh, on their own uh, catalog, the, the, the Bamberg catalog. So That's right, it's, a, it's a the, Cervejaria Bamberg, right? Cervejaria Bamberg, yeah, that's right. I wanna hear so how it, this whole thing happened. How, how did you come into contact with this brewery? How did they start making Sepultura beers? Well, this we had this guy that came up, approached to us in one of the shows close by the, the area, and uh, he was an investor. That he was working with uh, imports, bringing the different types of wines uh, from all over the world to Brazil, and he he was a fan. And uh, he approached us in the dress room and wanted to talk to us about the, you know, I really uh, like to work with you. I'm a fan. Uh, I think uh, the, the brand Sepultura has a very strong name in the market. So I'm, I'm willing to invest and to, to make a, a, a beer uh, 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 with you guys and, and see how it goes. And we talked about it and uh, we actually uh, had a, one beer before, uh, before Bamberg, which uh, was a very micro brewery that it didn't work out very well. So and then we we broke uh, we we broke the contract and and then after 
uh, few tries that I went with uh, this guy, his name is Mauricio, he lives now in Japan. So we went to Rio, to Sao Paulo, my hometown, different factories to different microbreweries to, to you know, to try out and to, to talk to the people. And everybody was so nice, and, but, uh, and one day he came over, came over to me, he's like, dude, I think I found it, I found the place. It's like, all right, let's go. And then, uh, you know, you know how it goes. We have like four members, blah, blah, blah. Each one likes a different, that has a different uh, taste. And uh, nothing, you know, basically was not, never decided. So I was like, all right, let me decide this thing. I'm going to go to the factory. <laughs> Whatever decide, is that okay with you guys? I'm like, okay, just do it. I'm like, so I went and I went. And to make the process uh, work, to see if everything was fine, uh, he already had the, the vice beer. And I try different di sort of diff different types that he had on the on the factory. And I really like the vice beer. I was like, dude, can we use your vice beer as a as a product type you now to see if the partnership ship is gonna work? If you you know all the business is gonna work, and it's like, and we did that. And uh, we just put the label on his vice beer, which is a very good beer as well. And uh, and from there it was a. It's a success, you know, and and then uh, a few months after that, he he came. No, actually, a few years after that, he came to us like, uh, "We need to, I need to, to produce the simple food recipe." So he sat down with all of us, brought a bunch of different samples, different kinds of beer from different sort of sorts of factory, and uh, and he created this ale, you know, with a. It'll be different because uh, I'm not a big fan of the ales, but this one is so, somehow is, you know, it's a uh, has a different uh, little bit of the bitter taste that I like. Um, I'm a I'm a vice stout and pilsen guy. Most you know, I appreciate the good beer, but I those are the main beers that I that I like to to drink. So we had the sample that Andreas tried out, Dad tried out, I think Aloy tried out, and then we start to talk, and he you know absorb all the all the information and came with this and i think it's one of the, the most selling beers on the his factory today i think it's in the, i think it's the third one that so, sells the most that's amazing so it's, uh, it's, it's been doing very well so far everybody that it brings in everybody i think there's that it's already got like three medals in europe and uh some some brew awards is that some uh, uh, uh brew awards that's what they call it and, uh, that's amazing so it's uh it's been doing good you know and now uh because it's so hard to to export all the all the uh the alcohol and stuff and um and he goes every year to 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 bavaria to to upgrade to study to you know to do all this stuff that he, he needs to do you know to see the new ingredients blah and uh and well, we've been talking about to it's like to to brew this recipe in Europe, mm -hmm. and maybe brew in North America as well. So we don't have to travel. We just bring to uh, bring the recipe to different places that the places that he believes that it can be worked out with us. So so this way we we have uh, we have the same about the same quality everywhere because people keep asking, you know. It's very hard, you know. Like, I know the I'm... Wine, like the wines that we have here today, they make the Portuguese wine. So it's very hard to come in Europe. You can find it, but in South America, in North America, no. So it's <laughs> very hard. It's a, it's a pain in the ass because all the fans, you know, they, they feel like the it kind of betrayed because we don't. <laughs> But it's not like that. It's it's very hard, you know. So we, right now we we're working very hard to try to, to put that in the global. You know, we're working to put all the merchandise about the same for so everybody can get. Of course, it's gonna have always gonna have a little special item here, special item there. It's uh, it's very hard to avoid that. But uh, we're trying to, to 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 bring the main stuff at least to to everybody. You know. Sounds special, and uh, I definitely, definitely want to try that beer. On my side, I'm going to be drinking Overhop Canada's Crisper. That's right. Cripster, Ooh. sorry. Cripster. This is a Cripster. collab. That's right. A collab they did with Mason's Brewing. This is brand new. They actually poured this beer into this growler from their fermenter for uh -huh. this interview today. 
because uh, Patty and Tatiana and everyone over at Overhop Canada are absolutely amazing. They are uh, a Brazilian brewery that has moved subsequently up here to Montreal. They started off a bit in the Ontario market and in the Quebec market, and now they have settled here. They have a brand new brew house. They are still they still have a sister company down in Brazil in Rio. Uh, I'm going to pour this out. Uh, tell me about the Brazilian craft beer scene, if you know anything about that. Uh, I know that we Brazil's been uh, my home state has been growing up a lot. You know, there's a lot, a lot of uh, microbreweries. You know, of course, we're still far away from uh, to be like the United States and uh, the German and you know the Europeans that they've been doing that for years. But uh, we've been it's been it's been a growing fast market. I'm drinking some wine. Perfect. Sorry. Yes. No, that's okay. <laughs> I, I was I was going to let you finish and then we cheers. But. Uh, uh, but it's growing a lot, especially in, in these regions over here. We, I've been trying, and there's the local metal scenes as well. They 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 have uh, they have uh, their own beers as well. I've been trying uh, tasting some good stuff, you know. So it's it's growing a lot. My my sister, uh, with her friends, they they like brew, brew some time to time. They brew a little bit at home. So it's it's a it's a it's a market that is being developed. A lot through the the past I I would say the past fifteen years and uh, it's growing it's growing fast. But Bomber Bomber itself it's it's a very nice uh, setup very nice factory, and uh, he knows what he's doing you know he's no he knows he's no joke so, so there's uh, some very good uh, learners down in Brazil and we drink good beer Brazilians like to drink beer so yeah on that note well cheers but, but they, well, cheers yeah. But we are learning to 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 drink different because Brazil is a warm country, it's a tropical country. So usually correct, yeah. we usually drink the small cups, very very cold beer, especially at the at the beach. But now the Brazilians they start to learn more about to use the right glass for this type of beer, to 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 bring more to the right temperature for each for each style of beer. I I've, I've been a uh, a big uh, I was a Guinness drinker for years, you know. I even in Brazil was a ambassador for Guinness for for a few years. So uh, there was one time in the in the, my life I was only drinking Guinness, you know, pretty much from uh, from uh, Wednesday to Saturday. So Guinness <laughs> was my my drink and sake. <laughs> but uh, but I was uh, being a, a good. Uh, uh, be a follower, um, be be appreciated. So it's, you know, but Brazil is getting, it's gonna, it's gonna be there. You know, Brazilians are when I know that we have a lot of wrong things, but when when a Brazilian get to to do something right, they they know how to do it right. So it's very rarely, but when we do, we do it right. <laughs> <laughs> and this uh, Crips. I gotta get this right. Cripster, sour, juicy IPA with passion fruit in it is is unbelievable. Ah, it's passion really, fruit. Yeah, it's amazing. Oh. Yeah, and uh, overhop. I can't give you guys enough praise. Uh, everyone drink their beers, please. Love them, love them to death. Uh, let's go back to when you were growing up in your parents' house or your guardian's house. What music was playing when you were not in control of the music? What music did your parents or guardians listen to? Oh. Uh, mostly the old Brazilian. My mom never never was into to rock and roll that much, but it was mostly Brazilian music as far as I could I could remember. <coughs> and my father, sorry, my father was not into. I never uh, caught him like listening a lot of music, but he 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 used to like to dance a lot to go to the ballrooms and dance and you know live music. But uh, he was not the one like. Uh, us like when I started listening to music, I was listening to music like 24 hours a day. Even you know, lay down with the little tape player by your by your pillow, you know, to sleep with the heavy metal very low. So uh, they, I think, uh, I I think in my house, I think I was the first first one to start to do that, and then my my brothers, after some years, start to follow me, and uh, you know, they all. Now my sister, she likes mostly Brazilian and 
and uh, sort of uh, different types of music. My, my my brothers got into the to the rock and heavy metal after some years. So, but uh, it was mainly Brazilian music at, at the beginning, but old stuff. Do you remember the first time you saw a concert? Yeah, uh, I would say eighty four, eighty. I think eighty eighty four. 83 to 84. And it was a band that it's, uh, we shared the first record, uh, the best cell devastation, the, the other, the, on the other side was Overdose. So that was the first concert that I, I ever saw, like a rock concert here in my hometown. And I think that Overdose inspired us, you know, to, because back then on the, on, the, on the rock metal scene here in Belo, uh, I think they were like, were the, the biggest local artists so they they already had they knew how to play very well and they knew how to you know to to put out a show so i think it was a a a, a, a begin for us so i think it really influenced us and on the beginning of our career you know to see all that you know happen in front of us that was that a moment like you, you saw and you're like i'm gonna do that i'm gonna be doing that one day for the rest of my life uh, that's what we thought, you know, was like, I don't know if we're going to be there. Oh, I like, to, I like to do that. That's awesome, you know, but, uh, you know, but for the rest of the life that came after, <laughs> came, <laughs> came, 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 came a little bit after that. I was like, oh, yeah. And when the things start, it started to pick it up, you know, and, like, and, uh, and, uh, and got to the point that uh, we could not do the school anymore and, uh, and combine the school with the music, it started to do a lot of more music than the school and then I knew that we had to choose and we chose the metal side. <laughs> which and, which for, you, for you guys was the right choice, but for a lot of people, it, 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 all, it most of the time it isn't. Yeah, yeah that, there's, a, you know, there's two people out there that we still have friends from back then. They still play, great musicians, but they all has have uh, uh, they all have regular jobs and you know have families, no hair, <laughs> <laughs> but they're still there. They still uh, still have the passion for the music and appreciate the music. And we talk about it when we see each other, you know, and we remember the old times, and which is great. You know, how did your parents take that when you chose music over a career? Uh, you know, actually, we we are here today because uh, our families really supported us. You know, they were not against. You know, we used to have rehearsals here in my house, and my father you, used to to bring everybody, even the friends, to hang out inside the house so he he could watch us instead of you know just kick us out and let us do whatever that we wanted. And it was not like that. He always was watching us bringing helping us to bring the gear to the concert sometimes work at the door with us to to control so it was a big help you know i think they they played a very important role in the beginning of the career it's amazing that's amazing very i definitely different, they're the, very different than most of the bands i believe <laughs> <laughs> yes i i actually had the same situation my bedroom was the jam room for many many years so so i, I totally feel you and my dad would drive and my mom has actually worked the door of the show actually too that's ah, true awesome. <laughs> um, so i love how you guys have brought your culture into your music and it's happened throughout almost all your cds there's always a moment that reflects the brazilian culture a lot of bands try to mimic a sound and then just stick to it but you guys kept to yourselves and always had that going how, how important was it for you to reflect your culture in your art I think that came, that uh, developed more and more through when we start to travel outside of the country. Because we hear, you know, we always listen to uh, samba at the bars because people hang out, you know, everything was, uh, there was no, no lockdown bars like in the United States and Canada. You have to show your ID to get in and you have to drink in it. Brazil is always in the street open. You know, we always, we were kids and my parents never, like my father never drink. So, but uh, we sit down at the, at, the, at the bar, he was playing cards, but we always grow up surrounded around people that drink all the time. And we listen to the, 
the Brazilian music all, all, everywhere, all surrounded, and especially with the in the football field, you know, mm -hmm. that was always music. And I think when we start to really travel outside of the, the country, we start to miss that, you know, missing that and start to, you know, bring that naturally, you know, the way that we played has the, the, the difference is, uh, I think it's more the, the Brazilian swing that it's a little bit different than, uh, than most of the band. So we, we can have that going on and the heavy metal, I think that's, I think it is, it is the signature uh, thing on this band, you know, the fact that we Brazilians and came out very naturally, you know, it's like you see, uh, you see a beautiful woman here, and when they start to listen to somebody, you, you, you look to the the booty, start to shake, and we're like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> here you go. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Brazil. Right? <laughs> you do have a, a very very unique sound, and and it ties into. One of my first tours actually we i was in mexico and there were black metal mexican bands and i was like why aren't they just doing their own thing so i love that you guys have always just done your own thing no we start very aggressive very you know very radicals but you know we start to grow up especially when andres came into the band he brought a new uh, a new you know style a new clean clean sound you know really playing through the riffs, you know, bringing some uh, the guitar hero's uh, influence that he liked a lot. And, uh, and I think that really helped us to, to open up the mind and, and, and try to, to reach for different uh, horizons, you know, music-wise. You know, there's a lot of bands, I, I don't like to compare, but there's a lot of bands that had, has, have, each one has a formula, you know, some, some mm -hmm. of them stick, to one form that works forever, but you know, for us, you know, we need to, we need to. That's our thing. Uh, uh, if you ask me about the next record, I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> it's gonna after, I, I, after this one, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. You're always living in the present, and everything yeah. is an evolution. And it's the same yeah. thing for Cryptopsy too. So uh, uh, that's uh, that's the idea. You know, you know, you guys survived the '90s when new metal went crazy and you guys dropped a monster of an album, which me being a new metal child, when I grew up, I grew up in the nineties. I was a huge fan of all that and Roots really spoke to me. So, so I like how you guys just went, work with everything and everything's an evolution and, but it's always you guys. Uh, let's touch on, I'm very interested in how you guys have stayed connected with your fans throughout this COVID. You mentioned that every Wednesday you do something special for them. So let's talk about that. Well, the idea is, you know, exactly like that. But what are you going to do? We're going to be sitting home for this, for the full year waiting. So everybody starts to thinking about it. We have social media. We can reach almost everybody in the house nowadays. So we start to think about, you know, with the conception of, of the quadra, the number four. So let's do on Wednesday at four o'clock Brazilian time with four pieces. And we start to do ourselves, and then we start to invite friends to talk for Q and A's. We, you know, not to interview, but you know, have a nice conversation to try to remember uh, the road stories and how we cross each other, how we became friends, and and we start to. At the beginning, it was only us to jam one one song for each uh, week, and then we start to invite. You know, guess now there's a list <laughs> that I'm going to like, hey, can we do it? Can we do that? <laughs> okay, let's all let's just schedule this. Now we, we're trying to 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 do the international artists. They spoke in English, you know, a crowd and, and try to do it, the Brazilians well, you know, because it's very hard, you know, to because when you, if we speak too much in Portuguese, all the rest of the world starts complaining. If you speak only in English, the Brazilians start to complain. You're Brazilian, you know. You had to go like, you know. So we need to. So we're trying to divide and make a little, trying to 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 make everybody happy somehow, you know. But uh, we have some surprises coming up tomorrow. It's Devin Thousand, a Canadian. Oh, cool, very uh, cool. So it's already announced. So it's I already saw the the stuff that he, the song that he did. Amazing. Yeah, he's amazing. <laughs> oh, he's, sounds, he's not human, sounds, man. Oh, no. It's, not, it's something else. But, 
you know, sounding great. So he's going to be doing the Q&A with uh, Andres and Derek. Nice. And uh, next week we have a Brazilian artist that are uh, very famous in Brazil that influenced us. And we keep going, you know, switch around and see the dates, who's available at the time so we can, you know, put in the schedule and try to make everybody happy and bring out the family and, and, and storytellers about the, the album covers, how, you know, a little, every week is a little different uh, topic. So we're trying to, to bring as much as we can as, as long as we, we're here at home. And I think we're going to be doing that, I guess, forever now. But so once we go back on the road, it's going to be a little different, of course. And probably we're going to be doing this like uh, personally with all the people. But I think, uh, I think it's cool, you know, and I think uh, it's good for the fans. It's good for us as well you know, to, to have a, a moment with the, with the musician friends and, you know, share some, some stories and some funny stuff and, and I'll have the chance to, to play with them as well. So, Which is exactly what would happen if we were on tour because yeah. that's, that is what tour is about. We get to play awesome shows in front of people and make yeah. new friends around the globe, but then there's those stories that happen backstage or before the show or around the shows. And it's those things that we remember probably more than the shows. <laughs> yeah, from guys, yeah, the shows that when you play almost every day, you know, it's simple food when you were on tour. Usually, you, we only have the Mondays off, so we play six days in a row, and uh, sometimes it depends and uh, uh, depends on the day becomes uh, sounds the same. You know, not every day, but sometimes you know it's, it's, like, al it's uh, always amazing. But yeah, yeah, that, but it, sometimes it, you know, for, well, you know, it's only it's, you only can understand that if you're on the road. For mm -hmm. so long, but uh, you know, some. Uh, but uh, when you have uh, a guest or something different happening, it's it's cool. You know, change the whole thing, and it's it's good about this because you can share with with the fans and with the people that's watching the, the stories that I I didn't even remember. Like really, oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> especially especially, yeah. especially I. I'm the worst. My memory is horrible. <laughs> remembers everything and I can already remember anything. So you have to, to really start to talk to me and then all the hard drive start to work. It's like, oh yeah, the backup. <laughs> oh yeah, now, now I remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the weirdest detail that sparks you back. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, somebody needs to hit the key. I was like, oh, okay, now I remember. <laughs> I, want, I want to touch on uh, this bar. You mentioned you have a bar in Europe. In Amsterdam. Can we talk about this? I think that's very interesting. Why did you open a bar in Amsterdam? Well, I have a friend there for many years, you know, and I always loved uh, Amsterdam, you know. And uh, to be, it's a different challenge somehow. And it's a place that, uh, you know, after so many years traveling, I'll be, I'll, uh, this year, I'll be 36 years in Sepultura. So I have every, I, at home right now, I'm trying to, to think Every time that I walk down, I come back to my room here, like, ah, I just got back from tour. So I'm just, I just need to relax so I don't go crazy. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so after so many years, you know, I like to, I go to Amsterdam. Or if, I'm, if I get tired of Amsterdam, I fly back home. Or if I, you know, I'm, we, we need to go on tour. So we, we go out for two months and then I, I go to Amsterdam for a break. If not, I go to Brazil. So uh, it's just to have uh, I need another, you know, of course it's a business. You like to make money, blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, it's a challenge. And it's, uh, it's something that I, I really enjoy, you know, to do it. And, uh, you know, it's a place that we have that I like to have to, to, to see friends if I'm there. People that you know passing by to the city on on the days off. You know we've been having friends and we had the Dead Cross. We had there was a <clears throat> who was there that I was not Airborne was there when I was not, I was not there. So many others. Uh, uh, Dave Ellison and Frank Bell did the, the project uh, <clears throat> there when I was not there. 
but uh, if I'm there, you know, I saw Devin Townsend when he was, you know, was there. So, you know, the, the guys from Ghost came down. And uh, so it's a, just a place to, to have to, to the people to hang out, you know, it's like to, you know, it's a, it's a very uh, mellow bar compared to the other ones. It's, it's not a metal bar, but it's, at the same time, it's a metal bar because there's a mixture cool. of people, you know, plays all types of music and only vinyl. So, nice. Yeah. So you can uh, enjoy any type of music that there is, and you can ask the bar, the person that is behind the bar at the moment. And uh, you know, it's just a pl place to sit down and uh, and and I'll have a beer and have a snack with your friend. Okay, my sister. Hello. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Oh, good. Um, that sounds like a place I'd like to go. I want to get the name for you. And if, do you can we say the name or is it private? Yeah, it's called BR020. Awesome, BR020. Uh, BR020. I'll send you the, the info later. Super cool. So it's, a, it's about 300 meters from uh, Anne Frank's house. It's not oh. far away. It's very central. From the, from the light supply and the famous bulldog, it's a 10, 15 minute walk. Straight That's walk. so, so cool. And, and is there craft beer being served there? I have to ask. Uh, no, not yet. Not yet. Uh, we have, but we have the first Pilsen in the world. Cool. We have Urkel. Yes. And uh, yes. we have, uh, we, we have a contract with the Kornaut and, uh, and uh, Roche. And uh, for the taps, we have to, to use that. And for the bottles, we can use whatever you want. Yeah. Whatever I want. And uh, when people ask, we go after. And, uh, but, uh, but, uh, I, I'm having the idea for for the next years maybe to have one at least a different uh, uh, micro I don't know gas beer we'll like see. A, ro a rotating tap yeah that'd be super dope yeah yeah, yeah. one last question tap Paolo. is perfect <laughs> yes <laughs> one last question Paolo uh, you, you probably have gone through this a lot of times you probably have just figured it out you might have a uh, secret what is your hangover cure Oh, um, eat right, eat healthy, and drink a lot of water. So that's that's the main secret. You know, Brazil is good for you know. I do my 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 home state and my hometown has uh, the most bars per square meter in in South America. It's very well known because all the bars in there. There's some very, very, and the, the, our home food is very heavy, good food, but heavy. It's not something that I can eat every day, but, but at the same time, Brazil has a lot of uh, good fruits, fresh, very good vegetables. You know, it's very, it's a very unique taste. That's something that I really missed when I go on tour. It's the, especially the fruits and the vegetables. It's so, it's, it's, you know, the bananas here is like, Urgh. there's a little banana, it's called apple banana, that tastes like an apple. Yeah, oh, so sure. apple, never uh, had it's, that. apple uh, it's a mix of, uh, but it tastes like an apple. It's really? amazing. Yeah. So I, I had a girlfriend in the United States for, you know, when we used to live there, when she tried it, when she got back to the U.S., she stopped to eat bananas for a while. So I, I, cannot, <laughs> I cannot eat this anymore. I'm like, I know. <laughs> See, <But> I'm telling you. <laughs> Oh, and there's a many you know, the regions you know and the, the the richness of the fruits are amazing so paulo thank you so so much for taking the time sit down with me drink some wine uh talk about your life talk about your music and talk about craft beer i really oh. really appreciate it cheers and thank, thank you, you so, so, much. so much so much well that's it it was too short oh <laughs> Hey, thank you all so, so much for listening right to the end. You know that I love and appreciate that. Boy, I don't know if you guys could tell, but I was slightly nervous sitting down for this interview. I have been listening to Sepultura since I started listening to metal, and uh, it was uh, very, very, very cool. Sit down and have a conversation with Paolo. It was a uh, truly amazing, massive shout out to uh, Paolo and the rest of the Sepultura camp. Keep it going. They have rescheduled their North American Quadra Tour with Sacred Reich crowbar and art of shock and it is coming through montreal and the montreal date is brought to you by heavy montreal that will be happening on march 19th 2021 
at Corona Theater. You should be there. If you don't have your tickets for this yet, you should get them. You can get those via the link in the description of this podcast. Also, I just want to give a huge and massive shout out to the Overhop Canada team, Patty, Ricardo, Tatiana, and both the Gabes for hooking me up with some delicious brews for this interview. I, I can't thank you guys enough. Uh, if any of you can make your way to the new Overhop facility, which is located in saint jean sur le richelieu I strongly suggest that you should. They are some of the nicest people in the craft beer industry. But not only that, they make some fantastic fucking brews. So check it out. All their details are in the description of this podcast as well. I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. I have one more episode coming at you this Friday. But until then, remember to enjoy life, metal, and craft beer. Cheers, Vox and Hopsheads. Oh,